everybody. 2016, Gen 6. This is a series question. It's actually for this year. Um, most of these points are possible items. Possibly a pretty little bit of the inner convergence. There is some overlap on there. So let's after it. Function F. It has a whole series about pixel images to have that all kinds of neat that have one prime of one, one is negative, and the derivative is given formula and that is larger than two. So, so since the first and then is one in the view, and then your function is given that one, this for a Anything that's the derivative of it, that's what So, this, this is definitely one of the things that they're going to be testing you on for the time, which is the AP um, guidelines call their unit. So, that's why I'm confusing for They're going to test you on it. For now, turn the general policy. Um, just need that to for Need derivatives. So let's look at the derivatives for a moment here. F of one was already given to you up here. Um, F of two uh, F prime is already given right here. But we get the derivative. You need to substitute um, for two. So one squared is positive, and then we have two. One, two, two to the second is four. So that's how you get this answer. And then one you get one you get one two makes a fifth. Uh, three minus two and to the third to the third is going to be two to the eight. So four. Um, you go with the rest of it. How do you grade this? Your first two terms of the Taylor series are f of one given plus f prime of one, but it's centered at x equals one, so it's not times x, it's times x minus one. Over one factorial, one factorial is irrelevant. So negative one half is your f prime of one, so that's why that gets substituted right in there. And then you know you can put it over one factorial, but you don't need to. Now let's do the twos. So that's the Two answer for the derivative. So the first two terms, since they're so easy, they were given. That's one point. And then as you try to allocate your second point, the third term, because you had to do some calculations here, you need to have this all done. Now, of course, this is one divided by four times two is eight. So you could absolutely change this to one eight, or you can leave it completely up to you. And then after that, you just use your answer here. So here is your 2 over 2 to the third, um, and then this was the, divided by the 2 factorial. This is uh, this is a little trickier here. So then you do have to do the third derivative is 3 factorial here. So 3 factorial is also equal to 3 times 2, and times 1, of course, but you don't need that. So 3 times 2. And what they did here is they canceled this 2 and they canceled this 2. So that's why they left it as 2 to the third. And then they have this extra three there. That's where all this comes from. Now, of course, this is eight. Eight times three is twenty-four. If you simplify this to one twenty-fourth, don't forget it's a negative. You're perfectly okay. So that's your first point is here. Your second point is here. Your third point is here. Your general term. So your general term basically don't forget your x minus one to the n, and then over your derivative formula here. So this is how you put your derivative formula in. So you put your negative one to the end, but then you got an n minus one factorial on the top. But then don't forget with your Taylor series, you have an n factorial on the bottom. So you could have left this as n factorial, I'm sorry, n minus one factorial over n factorial. No problem there. But if you really wanted to, you could simplify that, probably a good idea. n minus one factorial is n minus one times n minus two times n minus three. And then n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. Cancel, 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 
cancel, cancel, cancel, all of them forever. So you really just have a single solitary N on the bottom, and that's where that comes from. So the rest of that is right here. Um, so hopefully you got that M term right. That, that, it's a hard to get that, that general term sometimes. Moving on to part B. Part B says the Taylor series for f about x equals 1 has a radius of convergence of 2. So since it's centered at 1 and its radius of convergence is 2, that means it's 2 bigger than 1 to 3 and 2 smaller than 1 to negative 1. So that's kind of your interval. And it does say find the interval of convergence. The only problem is then when you're going from radius to interval, do you include these endpoints? Is this a closed circle or an open circle? Is this a closed circle or an open circle? Well, we have to figure that out. Now, I don't believe they're going to make you find intervals of convergence. They will make you find a Taylor series like part A. However, P series, harmonic series, alternating series tests are all part of this, and those are testable items. So that's why I still thought this was a good FRQ to um, assign to you. Like my cap today? Anyways. So here's my interval of convergence, which I kind of went through up here. Now the question is, what about negative 1? This is my answer to part A. So if I substitute in negative 1, you get a negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. And then negative 2 times 1 half is a positive 1. Positive 1. What about the next term? Here's the next term. Let's substitute in a negative 1 here. If you substitute a negative 1 here, you get negative 2 squared. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. 4 and 4 cancel. So you get half. Half. I'm not going to go through the rest of that, but that's when you get the 1 third and the 1 fourth. Now, is this included or not included in other words does it diverge or does it converge well this you should recognize as the harmonic series and if you don't recognize it with the harmonic series it's a p series so with p being equal to one so those both however you analyze that diverges i'll come back to the point allocation in a moment what about three so let me just change colors here we might plug in three 3 minus 2, 1 is 2. 2 times half is going to be negative 1. Negative 1. And likewise, if you substitute your 3 in there, you're going to get positive 1 half, then negative 1 third, then positive 1 fourth. The easiest way to do this, and I know there's an extra 1 on both of these, but that, that doesn't really matter once you recognize this as alternating harmonic and this is harmonic. Um, you'll know that, oh, this is alternating harmonic, the series converges. Now, obviously, these are also alternating series, too. So if the series alternates and the terms go towards 0, 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.25, those terms are absolutely going to 0, then by the alternating series test, this series also converges. Therefore, it's important that you have a bracket or a equal to on the 3 portion, and a parenthesis or a um, not equal to, just because x is greater than negative 1, part on the other endpoint. So now how do you get points here? If you are able to identify the endpoints of negative 1 to 3, and that is an extremely easy point to give me, if you identify it, you're good. To get this point, you have to go through all of the analysis and make sure that you've included the three because that's the convergent part. So when I mean all the analysis, you can't just say, oh, x equals negative one, diverge, x equals three, converge. You have to have reasons for why. So a lot of students forget all these details, but this is a really good problem to go through all those details to review. Alternating series test will be tested in 2020. Um, harmonic series, alternating harmonic series, P-series, all of those items are tested in 2020. So there's part B. Here comes part C. The Taylor series for f about x equals 1 can be used to represent f of 1.2 as an alternating series. Use the first three non-zero terms of the alternating series to approximate this. Well, this is the work from number one again, or part A, I should say. 
So when you're evaluating 1.2, you just substitute in 1.2 in for all your x's. 1.2 minus 1 is 0 0.2. And then you have your negative half in front. And then what do you do for the second term? Now let's see here. Use the first three non-zero terms. Term 1. Term 2. Term 3. So you're going out to degree 2. So counting terms. So that's why we're stopping here. So then how do you get this one? You obviously plug in your 1.2 again, and then this becomes over 8 or over 2 squared times 2 if you want. Completely up to you. Now, I would highly recommend you leave it. This is a no calculator portion. Now, this is not terrible. Half of 0.2 is 0.1, and then this is 0 0.4, 0 0.4 over 0 0.8. If you really wanted to, you could simplify that. You, any version of this that's numerically correct, you're good to go. It's one point only for that one. Part D, show the approximation found in Part C is within 0 0.01 of the exact value of f of 1.2. They have removed the alternating series error bound and Lagrange error bound from the test. So this is not a testable item. It's the only one that I'd say is not testable, but a lot of you were terrible at this on the... Um, on the, the chapter nine test. So it's not a bad idea to practice and just kind of give yourself um, some extra knowledge about error boundary. So show the approximation of part C. This is the stuff from part C um, is within 0 0.01. So you have to have your less than 0 0.01 here of the exact value of F of 1.2. So when you're plugging in your 1.2, you go through all that. Since this is an alternating series, you don't really have to do Lagrange. You just have to do the next term. This is the next term. So what do you do? You just take the 1.2 and put it in for x. 1.2 minus 1 is 0.2 cubed. Cubed. Negative 1. Negative 1. 8 times 3, 24. Or 2 cubed. And here's my work for 24. Now, all you really needed to do when you do alternate series error, don't forget it's the absolute value for the error. And then if you really needed to verify this, not a bad idea. It's not terrible. Um, this is, 0.2 is one fifth. 5 cubed is 125. 25 times 24 is um, 3,000. And 3,000, one three thousandth is definitely less than or equal to one one thousandth. So that kind of verifies your next. So here's your quick little summary of alternating series error. But of course, um, this is not going to be on the 2020 exam, but after that, it, it's coming all back. Thanks for listening today. I hope you have a good day and you're enjoying life in general. Life is good.